Hello everyone, it's Jeff again. Uh, welcome back. Uh, we've worked on this car several times and uh, we're going to do a few things to today. It's a 458. Uh, we're going to do engine oil, which we have a video on this on this car. And we're going to do um, power steering fluid change and the DCT fluid change. So uh, we're going to do that all today. Uh, we're probably going to show you more of the uh, transmission fluid change. Um, and power steering. Probably won't show you much of the engine oil because like I said, we've done a video on this car before. Um, we take the, take the pan off as usual. Like I said, we'll take the pan up on the front left for the power steering unit. So um, anyway, we're gonna come underneath here. We're gonna take a couple of plugs off. Uh, other than that, I believe these two have to come off right here. This right here. And then the filter and everything's on top. We're gonna to go ahead and drain those and uh, proceed on. Like I said, we're not gonna go step by step because we've done this before. But uh, anyway, continue on. All right, uh, we removed both these drain and this other plug. There's like I said, the three. Um, this is 11 millimeter, torque to 44 foot pounds. 11 millimeter, 44 foot pounds. Um, 22 millimeter, 18 foot pounds. Uh, they're all been drained. We're gonna go ahead and lower the car now and then uh, uh, remove the filter and uh, put oil back in it. So uh, that's what we're doing. All right, so we've got our new oil filter on there, new O-ring. Don't forget to put a little oil on there on both the O-rings, uh, ready to install on the car. And this is torqued to uh, 25 Newton meters or 18 foot pounds. Is that what it is, 18? Yeah, it's the same like, as well. Yes. Okay. So, we're gonna go ahead and install that. All right, so we've got our uh, filter housing back there. Uh, we'll have to leak check that here. 25 Newton meters or 18, approximately 18 foot pounds. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put our oil in um, at this time. All right, uh, we removed the air cleaner also. He wanted the air filter changed. So uh, we removed this plenum and then uh, changed out the air filter here. And then uh, we're going to go back and replace uh, the top portion here. Um, don't forget your screws here. Uh, it's an eight socket, eight millimeter. And then it's an acorn nut, and the other one I think is... Uh, what size is that? Give me a sec. It is a three, M3. Uh, eight, eight, Allen three. Allen three. So, and then these were here. These were Torx. Those were all Torx. Like a twenty-five, maybe. Yeah, T. I think it was a twenty-five. T twenty-five around the edge here. So we're gonna go ahead and put that back together, and then uh, proceed on. Also, uh, when we pulled this box out. I like to put tape along here. I mean, you could run it along the back here also. Um, we put some here also because this box when you remove it, it has to come out Kind of towards you. It doesn't come straight out. It's really close tolerance here on the spiders um, I'm not sure on the coops. It's probably got more clearance on the coops because this is designed differently But uh, yeah, it kind of comes out towards you and then engages on these clips on the front here So um, the only way to remove that is remove it aft towards you. So anyway moving on all right, so we've got the air cleaner back on, and uh, I think we're going to go ahead and proceed on to the DCT fluid. So we're going to go ahead and raise the car at this time. All right, um, we've got the car lifted back up, and we're going to do the DT or DCT, CT. dual uh, clutch transmission. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and drain it. Uh, I believe it's going to be this plug here, not this one. So you're going to remove this plug here. So and towards then, the back of the car, yeah. And it's towards that frame. We don't have this panel off, but there's a frame that, that passes through here. You'll see it. Um, and then over on this side, there's a stand pipe. So this is how you're going to fill it also. But we're going to take both these plugs out. And uh, you may get fluid out of both, but this is the actual drain. Um, we're gonna, like I said, remove both. We may get fluid out of here. But this is how you surface it and how you check the, the fluid uh, when you're servicing it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take those two out and then, uh, see how it goes. But, uh, anyway, we have the manual here and, um, 
we can show you the paperwork here. So, like on the illustration here, that's that's the drain plug. Okay. And then we go to the next page here. That's the, that's the torque. It's 25 Newton meters on that. And then here's your uh, standpipe right here. Uh, it, this must be an earlier model. It's showing like a little boss, but you can see how the framework here has got this X. Um, so that's where you're going to service it. See, so has a have a servicer here. You're going to have to have a some sort of tool or pump to service it. And then this is what it, the standpipe looks like on the inside. Okay. So uh, anyway, we're going to go ahead and do that and uh, show you how it's done. All right. All right. So we're uh, draining the DCT. Right now, like I said, we removed your fill port here. We've got our drain open right now. Uh, we're collecting the fluid. We took the old oil jug uh, just to see how much fluid that we got out of here, just so we know that we have the correct amount going back in. I know, you know, we'll have to run it and everything to, to adjust the quality of the DCT, but do just kind of want to see how much fluid comes out. So we're currently like at almost five uh, quarts the fluid's like right here uh we emptied this jug here so it's uh five about five quarts your car may vary because i'm sure there's gonna be fluid in there that's when you drain it is not going to be drainable so uh like i said we're going to do this right now uh, let this drain and then we're going to go on and move to the power steering so for that you got to go to the driver's side and remove this panel here to expose the unit. So uh, we're going to go ahead and take this panel off here. Looks like it's uh, mostly tens. I think they're all tens. And then uh, it's got a couple back there. We're going to go ahead and remove this uh, while that's draining. All right, so that's the panel we removed. Like I said, it's on the driver's side. Uh, as you can see right here, um, that's the panel. It's removed. And then back here, you can see that your uh, drains for your power steering right here. You want to remove these two here. So uh, you know what size those were? One's a 19. I haven't got the other oh, one. Okay, so one's a 19, and then we'll have to figure out what they are. I think it's probably 22 is a guess. But... All right, so we did verify this is a 22, and the other one's a 19. Uh, when you drain these, try to keep the fluid splashed to a minimum or... Wash it down if you splash around because the fluid uh, will eat paint. So uh, clean up your area if you uh, get fluid spill. So we're going to go ahead and drain this. All right, we're back to the uh, DCT. Uh, we've got our plug back in, 25 Newton meters, 18 foot-pounds approximately. Uh, like I said, this is your fill port here. Uh, we're going to use that. Uh, we did get about five quarts out of the we put it right into this jug here so it ended up being right here uh, the quantity that we removed so we're going to look to put in that same amount and like i said this is one two three four that's four quarts there and i kind of like take my fingers here and i would say that's five so it's a little over five quarts of fluid that we removed. So we're gonna look to be putting in about that same amount, all right? All right, so uh, pumping this fluid in here, uh, we kinda like had to make this apparatus up. Uh, we've got a hose that's sticking up in there. Um, what happens is if you don't have a fitting that fits the bottom of the case, um, we kinda sealed it with a, here, pull that rag down. Uh, we've got this tape, it's like rubber tape and we put it against the case so it's going to force the fluid up uh, into the DCT. So um, it really doesn't matter at this point. As long as the fluid's going in, like I said, once you pull it out, the standpipe will put the fluid at the proper level once we uh, start the car and heat it up. So um, and that's why we measured it so we have an idea also how much to put in there when we know it's going to get close. Yeah. So um, this is the third quart that we put in. Um, we've got two more to put in after this, but um, we'll see what happens. All right.
here on if you want to just say anything. Still anyway. pumping. <laughs> Down to have a one after this, approximately, maybe a little bit more. It depends on how much fluid we lost because when we first started doing this, we didn't have the uh, tape around the edge and we were losing a little bit. Um, so, uh, like I said, you're gonna do the final adjustment when we run the car. Uh, we may have to let it cool down and recheck it. Um, but hopefully, with us measuring it, we'll know how much we have in there. Turn the bottle here. Okay. here in a little bit. We'll, we'll do it at that point. Oh. All right, so we've uh, we're finished putting uh, the fluid in. We put in end up putting six quarts in, and uh, that way we know we had enough fluid, and the excess fl uh, flowed out for probably 30 seconds. So that gave us a good indication that the fluid is above the standpipe. So now uh, it calls out to start the car and uh, put the car in reverse and uh, let the transmission heat up, the DTC heat up. Uh, but you got to be uh, critical on your temperatures here. They're looking for a temperature range where they want you to check this. I'll have to look that up here. And, uh, and you should get fluid flow at that temperature range. And then once it stops flowing, you're good. So let me go ahead and look that up. I'll show you what that is. All right, so here's your manual. It tells you how to service that. By the way, the plugs are at 25 Newton meters on that. So what you're gonna do um, to check the level, you're gonna put it reversed, and then you're gonna have the brake pedal depressed and have it at idle, and then uh, the engine coolant temperature, you're looking for 40 to 50 degrees centigrade on your uh, temperature. So that's the temperature they want you to check the level. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to convert that over to uh, Fahrenheit. It's 104. 104 in Fahrenheit, approximately. Okay? So uh, at that temperature range, when the fluid stops running, that's your level that you're looking for. All right? And then after that, you're going to go ahead and put the fluid in, or the plug in, and be done with it. So... Uh, Anyway, that's what we're gonna do. All right, so we've got our car running. We have it in reverse. Make sure you keep your foot on the brake pedal. Uh, we have a little, little bit of fluid trickle. We had a little bit more when we first started. Uh, we're reading temperatures here. So uh, we're looking for around 100. No, that's not cool. All right, so uh, when we ran the car, we were looking for the engine coolant temperature of 104 and 122 while you're checking the fluid coming out of the standpipe, okay? So you're gonna get, you're gonna watch your uh, engine coolant temperature while you're checking the fluid flow out of your uh, standpipe here. Once that ceases to flow at that temperature, you're done. You, you wanna stop it put the plug in, torque it up. Um, you're actually, there's another temperature that you're looking for, but you'll never really get there because you'll have to run it for a long time, is uh, your hydraulic temperature would be 80 degrees Celsius or 176 Fahrenheit, but your engine temperature is gonna get to its point way before your transmission temperature. Your uh, fluid there is not gonna get to that point. So you're really looking for the coolant temperature on your uh, instrument cluster, all right? We've torqued this to 18 foot-pounds or 25 Newton meters. Uh, that's done, that's serviced. This is complete now. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to the um, power steering system drain uh, at this time. But yeah, like I said, uh, on your, this, when you're checking this flow, you're looking for uh, engine coolant temperature more so than the transmission temperature because you'll never reach the transmission temperature. You'll exceed the engine coolant temperature before you'll reach the transmission coolant temperature. So you're looking for 80 to 104 on your instrument cluster for your coolant temperature, or you can use a scanner. All right, um, we just ran the car to check the uh, DT, 
dual clutch transmission uh, fluid level. Also, uh, we're coming back here and uh, we're looking at the oil filter for the engine that we changed the filter earlier. Um, it seems like it's not leaking, so uh, that's good. And then uh, that should be complete. Then we'll have to check the level again here in a few minutes. Uh, we're going to have to get the temperature up and uh, check the level. All right, so uh, we've got the power steering fluid drain in here. We don't have the plug completely out yet. Uh, I just don't want to get fluid all over my arm. So I'm going to let it run here for a little bit. And then uh, I'll, I'll break the other line loose or the fitting loose. I don't know if you can see up into there. It's kind of difficult to see here if I get this light. But uh, anyway, I'll show you when we get the... Okay, you can see it there draining. Um, I'll break the other nut loose with the banjo fitting on it. That's a 22. But uh, like I said, I don't want to get the fluid all over my arm, so I'm going to let it sit and drain. And we did take the cap off the reservoir to help it breathe. So you may want to do that also. All right, we're going to retorque these uh, banjo nuts. 26 on the small one, 28 foot-pounds on the, the big one. Um, which... Uh, Newton meters was 35 and 38. That's correct. All right, we're going to torque those back up at this time and then uh, put fluid in and start the bleeding process. And then you might want to clean this area up if you got fluid around there, maybe take some alcohol and uh, spread it around, wipe, wipe the stuff down so it doesn't eat anything. All right, so we're going to go ahead and torque those now. All right, so we've got that torqued up. Like I said, the small one is 26 foot-pounds. The big one's 28. We don't forget to put your crush washers on both sides, one on each side. Um, if you want to change those, it, you can, they're good to change. We, we reused ours. We didn't have any new ones, so hopefully they won't leak. We'll uh, leak check it here when we get done. Uh, other than that, uh, we're going to start putting fluid in on the top side and then start the bleeding procedure. All right. All right, so we've got the cap off here. The cap, the dipstick has two different uh, temperature readings. One says 990 Celsius, and then the other says 20 Celsius. One's cold, one's hot. So we'll watch the side that you're doing. Uh, makes a difference on the level that you're gonna get. Uh, some of the people now, this fluid wasn't that dirty. So uh, some people, if you feel like your fluid it was really dirty and your tank is dirty you can remove this assembly remove the tank uh, and flush it uh, but we're not going to do that we're just going to go ahead and resurface it so we're going to go ahead and put fluid in it right now also um, you'll have to verify your car serial number um, there is a difference between the earlier models and the later models this one here is a later 458 so it calls out for this Penson, I'm not saying it right, CHF, Pentosin, CHF 11S is what it calls out for. So uh, like I said, make sure you know what fluid you're installing because they, earlier cars have a different fluid and they do not intermix. So be aware of that. And it goes by serial number. All right, uh, we're at the point here, we're almost done, we're gonna run the car and you're going to turn the steering wheel from lock to lock 10 times and uh, when you get finished here you shouldn't have any bubbles in there so we probably have too much fluid in here we'll have to probably take some out all right so we've serviced this we brought our level down like I said, when it's cold like this, you're gonna use a 20 Celsius mark, and uh, we're right below the max. You probably can't see that, but um, we're right at our limit, so we're gonna be good on that. And if you spill any of this fluid on anything, make sure you wipe it up, because it doesn't like paint, or paint doesn't like it. So basically what you wanna do here is uh, Drain your fluid, put your caps back on and up front. Come back here, if you clean your tank if you have to do that. 
we didn't do that process. Uh, we went ahead and uh, serviced it. Uh, make sure you put in the proper fluid. You want to install fluid and then you're going to, without starting the car, you're going to go lock the lock several times, as many times as it takes. Usually it's three or four times. You'll see the level of the fluid drop down and it'll start stabilizing and then you'll see the bubbles be eliminated. And then you're going to start and stop the car two or three times and you'll see the level drop without turning the wheel lock to lock. And then once that stabilizes, then you're going to start the car, let it run. You're going to do 10 times full locked, left to right. Don't force it uh, 10 times and it should stabilize and you should not have any air bubbles. And then uh, if the fluid is cold, you're going to use a 20 Celsius uh, gauge onto the cap or under the cap. So other than that, that is done. So we're going to, at this point, check up front again, make sure we don't have any leaks on our lines, and put the cover back on. And that'll complete this power steering pump fluid change. All right, uh, we did our uh, leak checks here on the bottom, uh, the power steering. Now I don't see any leaks, it looks all nice and dry. Like I said, we wiped the area down with alcohol also. And then uh, now we're ready to um, put the panel back on. Like I said, this is on the driver's side. So, um, like I said, make sure these don't leak. We're good to go here and uh, put the panel on. We should be done. All right, uh, we've completed the service on this 458. Um, we've installed the front panel underneath. It's all complete. Uh, nothing leaked. So, um, everything was uh, turned out good. Like he's going to go ahead and double check the power steering when he gets home and the engine oil just to make sure it's uh, up to op normal operating temperatures and that and then he's going to ver re-verify levels. But uh, anyway, uh, continue to watch and uh, we'll catch you next time.